And welcome back. You're looking live at Cleveland, specifically Quicken Loans Arena. This is the final night of the Republican National Convention, a convention uh, really marked by unexpected turns. Some will say dysfunction, certainly party disunity has defined this from speeches that uh, were accused and I think verified as uh, elements of plagiarism to obviously uh, what we saw last night played out um, with Ted Cruz and the non-endorsement and everything that followed. And the whole time that we've been in Cleveland, so has Andrew Whitman, and he rejoins us right now. And Andrew, uh, lay out, if you could, a little bit um, how the night is expected to progress here. I know, uh, you know, it's the first convention you and I have ever covered. Well, you never know exactly who the speakers are and when they're supposed to come up. They give you a list of names, but we kind of fly by the seat of our pants. Obviously, we know Donald Trump will be introduced by his daughter, Ivanka Trump. But give an idea who else will be speaking tonight. Well, we know that, uh, first of all, there are rumors that Melania Trump may actually come out and say something. Uh, Obviously, she would be expected to appear alongside Donald Trump uh, at the conclusion of his speech. Traditionally, the first lady or the first lady candidate would be seated in the box, the VIP box, looking on somewhat fawningly uh, as the spouse is giving the address. But there are actually some whispers that Melania Trump may say something. And given what we heard from her earlier in the week, first of all, you can guarantee it's going to be original words. And second of all, uh, that would be a bit of a surprise uh, and a little bit of a counterpunch by the Trump campaign. Jerry Falwell Jr. is going to be speaking. Uh, that, again, another play to the evangelical base that Trump has been trying to reach out to uh, over the past week. Uh, and also, you could make the argument that the selection of Mike Pence was a, a uh, reach out in that direction as well. Reince Priebus also has some time tonight. One expects that he would make a call for party unity. Uh, which has obviously been somewhat lacking as we've been going through. A couple of other quick things I just want to get to, Rich, uh, if I could. On the topic of party unity, there are rumors of potential walkouts from delegations on the floor uh, of the convention. This has only been coming to light in the last few minutes. Uh, there are whispers, if not outright uh, discussion, of the Texas delegation walking out. Texas obviously solidly behind Ted Cruz. That was the group that Ted Cruz visited this morning when explaining his comments on the floor, or his comments to the convention last night. And so some uh, or all or none of the Texas delegation, I guess I surrounded that, but uh, whispers of a potential walkout in the Texas delegation. There were also reports that the Utah delegation was voting on whether to walk out uh, and that for, at least as of right now they intend to stay uh, in where they are uh, on the floor. But you get a sense of the split that states that supported Ted Cruz are considering some sort of demonstration or some sort of walkout which might theoretically throw Donald Trump off his game as he's coming out to begin his speech. If he winds up going off prompter and off message, well, then who knows what could happen. There's also a bit of a feud going on and continuing with Ohio delegates. This is a little complicated, but some New Hampshire delegates were meeting with John Kasich today. The Trump campaign was reportedly trying to get them to skip that or boycott that. Now there are, are uh, some words, or, or I'm hearing that the Ohio delegation may take some action in response to that. Uh, one last thing, we're getting a hint. At the, the Washington Post just put out a copy of a transcript of uh, the speech tonight that Donald Trump is supposed to give. I've only just had a chance to scan it very briefly, but from what I've read, it's going to be a it's midnight again in America kind of speech. The, the, Donald's, the Donald Trump going to go through the litany of problems that the country is facing, uh, looking to add a little scare to the uh, proceedings tonight. And then, of course, lots of hearty, full-throated attacks on Hillary Clinton. So if we were think looking for kumbaya, if we were looking for unity, if we were looking for uplifting message, or for that matter, any actual policy specifics, it doesn't appear to be coming from Donald Trump. If A, the reporting that I've seen from the Washington Post is accurate, because I've not gotten any Thing directly from the Trump campaign, and B, if Donald Trump sticks to the script, which of course, you know, who knows, Rich? Uh, and Andrew, we've gotten a few excerpts already uh, among the, the lines, America first. We've heard that before. He's going to go after Hillary Clinton's uh, qualifications. More important, her judgment. In fact, he sources Bernie Sanders if he sticks to the script, questioning her judgment on that and that she has made America less safe obviously in her position as Secretary of State. But you mentioned before the potential for walkouts. I was under the impression that maybe after Cruz, uh, the fiasco that was last night, that might have galvanized the people in the convention to say, you know, maybe in spite of Trump or whatever, 
we don't want this anymore. We're going to rally around for the final night here, the candidate we have, apparently not so much. Apparently not, if those, uh, if those reports are to be, be believed. Look, there are, as we've talked before, there are plenty of people here who are true believers. Uh, they have been elected and, and, for example, New Jersey delegates ran so that they could be uh, Donald Trump delegates. That's the way it works in a lot of different states where you are a delegate for a particular candidate who you believe in and have some involvement with. Obviously, those people aren't going anywhere. Then you have other people in, in states who are sort of elected by slate. Uh, New York, for example, the state party elects everybody. So for the sake of the party and the party establishment, you wouldn't expect to see anything like that coming from a New York delegation. But where you've got a strong Ted Cruz uh, contingent, Texas being a prime example, Utah, Colorado has a strong uh, Cruz uh, contingent. There are plenty of other examples. You may see some defections. And, and you know, I know that crowd size and crowd levels has been an issue uh, over the course of this convention. I've seen reports and, and shown comparison photos uh, between this convention and 2012 and 2008 and 2004, and it seemed like over the first couple of nights of this convention that the seats were far less crowded. The floor was far less crowded, and the seats, you know, way behind me in the in the cheap seats where I'm sitting now or standing now, were also far less empty over the first two nights. That was not the case last night where it's definitely seemed like it filled up a little bit. And just looking around, and we're still about a half an hour away from the start of the convention, or maybe a little bit less, it's already more crowded than it was at this point uh, last night. So the crowds are coming. People want to see Donald Trump. Look, this is the headline event. And as you know, he's great theater, he's great television. You never know what you're going to get. But there are some ideological differences. And Ted Cruz seemed to solidify those differences, especially with the comments that he was making this morning, uh, saying, you know, how in good conscience could somebody do that and, and you're betraying conservative principles. That's the kind of stuff that rings true to his supporters who would put their principle over the future of the party or the current standing of the party and also help Ted Cruz potentially make another run for the White House four years from now if there's no sitting Republican uh, at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. So that'll be a fascinating subplot to see. And if it's going to play out, that's all going to happen right as Donald Trump takes the stage. And then if it does, who knows what happens, Rich. Thank you, Andrew. Chris? You know, I, I, I'm struck by the fact that there were probably, there are probably a number of conservatives who know Donald Trump isn't a conservative, yet they've endorsed him. And they feel pretty awkward. And now you have Cruz being kind of true to his conservative principles, saying, what about you guys? You know? Mm -hmm. So I, 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 think, I think there's some people who are, are just feeling very uncomfortable about their votes. Well, you know, their bill never is unanimity, I mean, lockstep when you have a vice president and a president. They're not going to agree on everything. Um, and you would argue you don't want them to agree on every I, single I, thing. Let me just jump in on this. Yeah. So, I, I've lived my life in this party, and if you weren't pro-choice, uh, excuse me, if you weren't pro-life and, and, and strongly for the Second Amendment with, with no government uh, restrictions, then you weren't a real conservative and you weren't a real Republican. I mean, they have given Donald Trump so many passes, it blows my mind. And to me, what's interesting is, to, to piggyback off that, Mike Pence and Donald Trump on a host of issues, and people got a brief um, uh, hors d'oeuvre of it if they watch 60 Minutes. But even today, think about what's happening. The NATO comments. Mike Pence is diametrically opposed to what Donald ha Trump had to say uh, as it related to NATO and how we ought to respect or not respect members depending on their payment structures. Today, tonight, I should say, Peter Thiel, who's a venture capitalist, is going to be speaking. I believe he'll be speaking probably in the 9 o'clock hour, if not even um, in the middle of it. He's openly gay. Mike Pence, um, he's for the religious freedom laws that have basically legitimized some discrimination if the employers see fit here um, to prohibit employment for somebody based on their sexuality. Um, but he's also for the defense of marriage laws, which don't support gay marriage, etc., Donald Trump's been all over the place in this. But you have somebody, and you can look at this two ways. Kudos to the Republican Party to put somebody front and center here that usually isn't at a Republican National Convention. But it also, to me, Bill, points out the schism right now with the party, where the presidential hopeful and his running mate are diametrically opposed on real issues, and you have somebody coming up 
that will be speaking tonight. And on the platform, there are six different issues on the platform specifically related to biases against gays. So it's not just that Trump's all over the place. The party right now is all over the place. Who's speaking, what their platform is, what the president is running mate for. You almost need a scorecard to see who's for what and who's not. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no question there's a massive schism going on and there's potential for a genuine civil war in the party. Some of that is ideology, and, and I probably fall out more in the conservative side than the congressman. It's not, not in all things, a mm -hmm. gay marriage, and, I mean, it depends on, on the issue. Uh, but it's not all about ideology. The fundamental, my disagreement with Trump and the reason why I left the party because he's the nominee is because I think any political party has a fundamental obligation to put up a responsible candidate, a candidate that can serve as, as president. And I don't think that Trump meets the test. I think he's temperamentally unsuited for the Oval Office. I think, and, and we've seen so many examples of that. He's had so many passes and I find great disappointment. I feel great disappointment in the party in watching the excuses and the rationalizations be made. I'm getting hammered out there from 30 year friends. And I think the Congressman again is right in that where they're saying, we jumped in, why don't you jump in with us? Let's all go down with the ship together. <laughs> and it's no, it's no. And I think Cruz shamed them last night by standing up and not making that endorsement. Yeah. And I hope he bucked them up. I hope they don't destroy him. I hope he bucked them up. And he showed them what principle looks like. Well, you clearly see right. um, uh, the schism playing out from Andrew's reporting right now, that you have different state delegations wrestling with where's their line and what they're going to do tonight. I, I think if people are looking for theater, obviously what Donald Trump has to say, uh, that will be the most compelling storyline. But also what happens on the floor and why? Uh, to me, that'll be fascinating if people are trying to look for something to pay attention to. If people get up in Texas or in Utah or in Colorado or wherever the case may be, and they walk out, guys like Andrew and the rest of them are going to say, why? And why they say they're walking out? Is it because of Ted Cruz, the treatment or whatever else? Or is it because they said, I've wrestled with a line here. He's crossed it, and I just can't reconcile. I'm not going to vote for Hillary, they'll say in November, but I just can't get behind this guy. That's what I'd, I'm fascinated to hear today. Well, you know, you've identified the schism, the disagreement, as, as Chris and Bill have said, uh, on the floor at the Republican National Convention. But I think more attention needs to be paid to what is unifying the Republican Party. They hate Hillary yes, Clinton. Yes, they do. And uh, so many Republican friends of mine just cannot get over the history, the baggage of Hillary and Bill Clinton. And um, there are plenty of Democrats who have difficulty with that kind of baggage as well. At the end of the day, though, uh, and I think Bill is right, uh, the American people are going to have to decide, okay, we really don't like Trump for the, the nasty things he said, the reckless things he said. We don't like Hillary for all of the reasons everybody knows. Uh, but we've got to hold our nose and pick somebody. Let's pick somebody who's not going to cause the country uh, to be uh, hurt in a national mm -hmm. security sense or an economic disaster sense. And uh, that's the only hope Hillary folks have. I think the Republicans are pretty united. It's uh, the Democrats hate Trump. The Republicans hate Hillary. The independents and some of the moderates in each party are going to have to hold their nose and say, mm -hmm. Who's, we're going to talk who's the least dangerous? This, maybe can it, answer. Yeah, maybe he is. And, and maybe we'll be surprised by a third party candidate. And also, can Hillary make herself more likable between now and November? We shall see. All right, we're going to jump to a quick commercial break. Again, you're looking at live pictures from Cleveland. The convention getting ready to start in a few minutes in earnest on the final night of the RNC. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back.